Hi guys, uh, just a quick video going through the mixed revision okay, that you did and I'll start by saying that you did a pretty good job on it considering you're on your own and um, we haven't done some of them topics for a while and all of those questions were from exams okay and some of them are really quite difficult okay the last one I thought was very hard and it was actually the last question on the paper um, the year I stole it from okay but you had a pretty good go the mistakes were tended to be actual little mistakes stuff you'd forgotten to include rather than not understanding okay so I was really pleased with how you did on your own but here we go I'll just talk you through a few things and I'll point out some of the mistakes that some of you made okay so on the first one you had to uh, get the car on a caravan up the hill and it said to work out the acceleration when it was traveling at 24 meters per second so all of you remembered that to find the force you do power divided by velocity and got a force pulling up the slope of 2000 newtons okay um, looking at both of them together which is all you can do to start with there's a total air resistance of 400 newtons but crucially um, one of you forgot to include mg sine theta which is the weight of the object itself wanting to go down the slope okay so you didn't include um, 1600 times 9.8 times sine theta but you were told in the question that sine theta was 1 over 20 so you don't actually need to know the angle you can just put 1 over 20 in there okay and then it was just f equals ma and most of you got that one right so the acceleration was 0.51 okay second part wasn't as good it said to calculate the the towing force from the trail um, on the caravan so uh, the, it doesn't have its own engine so the only way that it's going up the slope is because it's being pulled by the car okay and it's connected to the car by a tow bar you will have seen a caravan and a car connected by the little knobbly thing on the back okay and we know a lot about the caravan we know its mass is 600 on its own like don't include the car in this this is the key thing okay on its own it's got a mass of 600 air resistance of 140 and mg sine theta is different this time because we're not including the car okay somebody kept mg sine theta the same but it's not but we also know it's traveling at 24 meters a second and accelerating at 0.51 because it's connected to the car and we just worked out that that was accelerating at 0.51 so then it's just a case of f equals ma with the force you don't know is the one pulling it up the slope the force from the car Okay. and then uh, Newton's laws say that that 740 Newtons that you come out with is pulling backwards on the car but obviously we've included that already when we treated them as one okay so that was question one that was pretty good though question two was okay as well okay so we had the two things were going towards the wall then B bounced back and if you used separation speed over approach speed for the for ball B, it left the wall at three and it approached the wall at four. So three divided by four is three quarters, 0.75. Right, then B was trickier. Using the uh, restitution formula, E equals separation speed over approach speed. And we were told that E was five sevenths. And we knew that at this point here, they were approaching each other at seven. Okay, so putting five sevenths and seven in, you can work out that the separation speed after they collide is five. Now lots of you got the five, but it's what you did next with the five that went wrong. Okay. Particle B must be traveling faster than particle A, otherwise A would pass through B. Okay, so B's got to be the quicker of the two. And some of you had um, V minus five for particle B which means it was going slower than particle A so you needed to put V plus 5 in there okay and then it was just a case of um, doing momentum before equals momentum after and a few of you forgot to include that the that before they collided here this is a minus velocity because it's going the opposite direction to this 4 here okay so you didn't have 51 there you had something else I can't remember what it was and it mucked everything up okay but if you forget remember to include that this is minus and you put v plus 5 for the small particle you get 0.64 and 5.64 for that okay and then it's just a case for finding the impulse 
just do pick one of the balls and do momentum before take away momentum uh, sorry momentum after take away momentum before but again we had this forgetting that it had minus momentum to start with and so we had a few wrong answers there um, the loss of energy bit you were pretty good at mostly because signs don't matter and it was the signs that you were getting wrong okay you worked out the total kinetic energy before you worked out the total kinetic energy after and you took them away from each other okay a lot of follow through marks here and you also all found that a would continue towards the wall it didn't get reversed okay and in my diagram i would have known if it was reversed because i put it as going to the right if down here v had come out as a minus then I would have been wrong and it's going the other way. But I guessed it was going right. My answer came out positive and that meant that, it, that I was right. Okay. Question three. On flat ground then, and again you just have to use force equals power over vo um, velocity here. Okay, we found out that the velocity would be 40. I think every single one you've got that right. And then this is similar to question one after that then. So you found most of you found the the force properly, okay? It was 30, uh, three thousand two hundred. Again, we had um, forgetting to include mg sine theta going down the slope or mg sine alpha as they've called it, okay? So remember, it's not just air resistance. There's the fact that all heavy things want to go downhill, and that's where you get out. That's where mg sine theta comes from. Okay, and A came out as 0.51 again, even though it's a completely different question to earlier on. And then it said um, to state an assumption, well, in reality, that air resistance would be all over the place. Some of you said wind, and that's true, because if you go into a, a gust of wind, then there's going to be more air resistance. But also, it's not going to be fixed um, for all speeds. So that, there's your assumptions. But that was that was a pretty good question, as long as you remember to include the 588 newtons of mg sine theta. Okay. Question four. Um, some of you got a bit of a pickle on this one. I got a lovely diagram. They're very proud of that. Even my daughter said that was a good diagram. So we've got to make sure that the cyclist, I think it is, has got enough energy to get to the top of the second peak. Okay, and what I did is I put a baseline in of zero, sort of zero meters, ground level, sea level, whatever you want to call it. And I said that you'd need 15,092 joules to get to the top of that hill. Okay, a minimum. And that's if you've got no joules left when you get to the top. So you'd be stationary when you got to the top. But that's the absolute minimum. So by doing MGH. Now, where does that energy come from? Okay, well, when you're at A, you've got some... GPE already, haven't you? Because you're 20 meters up, and we said he's going to have some kinetic energy, and that's what you had to find was the, was the kinetic energy and then the velocity. Okay, but what a lot of you didn't include, or you tried to include it and didn't do it properly, the resistance of 50 newtons. That is a force measured in newtons. It's not energy measured in joules. To make it energy or work done as we call it you have to do force times distance and that's why in the question it told you that altogether he would cycle 16 meters you had to include 50 times 16 as well as a loss in your system okay so this is the kinetic energy he's got this is the gpe that he's got we're going to lose 800 joules because of resistance and i need to have this many joules left over at the end and if you put all your numbers in and rearrange it, V comes out as he has to have a minimum velocity of 7.88 to get this much energy in total when you include these losses here. Okay, I, I wrote this on a few people's that you'd either left it out completely or you put minus 50 and forgot to do 50 times 16. Force times distance is work done. Okay, number five. This was pretty good. Okay. Um, before the string goes tight, only one of them is moving. Okay, so the only momentum before is 8 times 7, which is 56. Afterwards, they are both moving, and because they're tied together, they're both moving at the same speed, which is helpful because you can call them both V. There's no need to have V1 and V2, or VP and VQ, or V and V plus something. Okay, they're both the same speed because they're tied together. 
So the three kilogram mass has got three V momentum. The seven kilogram mass has got seven V momentum. Whatever you put eight V, I don't know where you got that from, but it mucked everything up and meant I had to mark it properly. Thanks for that. Okay. So if you do momentum before equals momentum after, you get V is 5.6. And once you've got um, velocity before and after, all you have to do is pick a particle and do the change in momentum. Okay. Um, velocity before, velocity after. Calculate the momentum to find the difference. And because there's no change of direction, you aren't going to worry about minuses. Because if you, even if you picked this one, it was going right and it's still going right. So not too many mistakes you could have made there. So but that was a pretty good question overall. This one wasn't so great. And actually the mistake a lot of you made was you got the drop-in distance wrong. And it meant that even though you got follow-through marks, it was a pain to mark for me. So... B is 0.2 meters from the edge and what you didn't allow for is that that meant when the ball dropped at the point where the string was no longer slack and, and, they, and was tight the 1.8 meter string 0.2 of it was still sort of on top of the table connected to B because B wasn't on the edge of the table so it actually only dropped 1.6 meters because of the 0.2 along the top surface of the table from there then, you could either use SUVA or energy. I used energy. Look, I did change of um, MGH. Um, so any gravitational potential energy we lose by dropping becomes kinetic, which is what a lot of you others did as well, actually. But you had the wrong dropping distance. You had 1.8 in there, or even 2 somebody had. But 1.6 is how far it's fallen. So V is 5.6, so you could have got it from SUVA, look. Right, if you know that the 2 kilogram mass is travelling at a velocity of 5.6, you can find its momentum. So that's what I did next. I found the momentum of just the one particle that's moving. And then a little bit like the question before, when the string goes tight, they both start moving. Some of you ignored the fact that B would now get dragged along the tabletop. Okay, and that's where you went wrong. But they're both moving. So in terms of momentum, we had 11.2 newton seconds before. We've got 5v and 2v. Remember, they're tied by strings, so they've got the same velocity like the last one. V is 1.6. And once you've got the v is 1.6, just a quick change of momentum to find the impulse. Okay, and you could have picked either particle. I think I did it for particle b because it was stationary. Any momentum that it gained was going to be impulse because it was on zero to start, wasn't it? Okay. okay this question was horrendous okay it's a it's a very tough question uh, lots of you had a pretty good stab at the first part okay you didn't maybe quite get it as neatly as you could but you gave it a good go um, because we've got lots of variables here m's and v's and we got va's and vb's okay you're never going to do it with just one equation so it's using uh, the conservation of momentum and the restitution equation in tandem okay and, and plugging one into the other and i had a few goes of, of what to make the subject and what to sub in before i got something that looked vaguely nice and resembled the mark scheme okay i, I mean that obviously if you've got an equivalent uh, expression written differently you're going to get the marks but if you don't write it as they've written it the next two parts of the question are quite hard so that's why it's such a nasty question it only works if you do it in a very particular way okay so at the very start just uh, particle a is moving so mu is the momentum and then after a and b collide we've got two lots of momentum two different speeds though because they're not connected so we've got mva and mvb and then i cancelled them out because m's are all the same okay so you end up with this u equals va plus vb then using the separation speed over the approach speed so the separation speed is the difference between vb and va va is obviously going to have to be smaller than vb isn't it otherwise they're not going to separate over u because before they uh, collided only particle a was moving so the approach speed is u okay if you rearrange that you get that eu is vb minus va and then what i did from this equation i made va the subject and i made vb the subject and i put them in here okay 
in place of VB and VA. So I had one version where I only had E's, U's and VB's and then I had another version with E's, U's and VA's and it meant I could get an expression for VA and VB. Okay. Um, there are other ways of writing this. So a lot of you left the first one. If I can find my writing pen, which I can't, maybe it's in my pocket. Um, so a lot of you left this first one as um, uh, EU plus U over 2. Of course, that's right. Okay, and in fact, I'll come back to that in a second because that's not what you wrote. This one you had u minus eu over 2. So that was fine because that's the same thing. Okay, but this 1 minus e will really help later on, you see. So that's why they factorized it out. Actually, what a lot of you had here was u minus eu over 2 plus eu. So if you think of this here, you've got, because of the over 2, you've got minus, you can think of that as minus a half of eu. And you're plus in a whole EU. So you end up with positive a half of EU, which is where this comes from. Okay, so that phrase, that little expression there, look, but it becomes that if you tidy it up. All right, that's a double dash, not an N. Okay, you've got minus a half of EU, you add in a whole EU, minus a half plus one is plus a half, and the plus a half that you end up with is this. Okay, EU over two. So that's a neater version of that. And then again, if you factorise the the U outside, this E plus one is handy later on. For part B we were told that E was a half. And so you could sub that into VA and VB, which a lot of you did. So VA was a quarter U and VB was three quarters of U. And then there's just a lot of mucking around you with kinetic energy. So before, we only had one particle moving, mass M, speed U, half M U squared. Take away the kinetic energy for each of these. Okay, now what I would say, be careful. When, you do, when you've got three quarters of U, and then that's squared, isn't it? Because it's a half mv squared. You've got to square your three quarters as well, which gives you nine sixteenths. And here, where you've got a quarter u being squared, because it's half mv squared, you've got to square your quarter, and a quarter times a quarter is one over 16. Okay, but if you tidy all of that, you end up doing a half, take away five sixteenths. So eight sixteenths, take away five sixteenths, leaves you with three sixteenths. Okay, most of you actually, if you'd got this first, uh, part A right, you got part B right, but you only got two marks for it, which I thought was a bit rubbish because it was quite a bit of algebraic manipulation to do there. Part C, oh, it took me ages. It took me ages to get it into a sensible form that made sense. I, I sort of had lots of half proofs and it was quite tricky to explain how I'd got there. Okay. So what you'd have to find here is that when B hits C, for there to be no further collisions, the speed of B after the next collision has to be more than a quarter of U. Okay? If after the next collision between B and C, if B is not travelling quick enough, A will catch it up and they'll collide again and it said they not to collide again. Okay? So again, now this is looking between B and C. <clears throat> I got the restitution formula, okay, this time with VC and VB, but I don't really want to include VC in this because I've got enough variables already. So the trick here is doing momentum before momentum after look, and because we're only interested in B and C, this is the momentum of B before the collision, and this is the momentum of both of them after the collision. I made VC the subject so that I could sub it in here and get rid of VC because the question was only asking about VB okay and I you've just too many variables so by making VC the subject of this so the start of this is actually very similar to the start of part A except it's talking about particle B and C not A and B but I made VC the subject I subbed it into there okay doing a bit of mucking around tidying this up Okay, and getting VB on its own, you end up with this. 
okay you work it through it does okay and then this goes back to the very very beginning where we said for there to be no further collisions the velocity after so VB has got to be more than a quarter of U so I put this as more than a quarter of U worked it through and I found that E has got to be less than a third okay there is another way listed in the mark scheme but it I couldn't get it to make sense in a way that I could explain uh, I'll, I'll put the mark scheme up you can have a look I can't remember which one of you were close to it but because you the reason it didn't work is because much much earlier on in part a because you hadn't put it into this format of 1 minus e in brackets and e plus 1 in brackets you got yourself on a pickle all right so the easiest way I could find to do part C was to basically do exactly the same as I did part A knowing that VB had to be bigger than a quarter of U for there to be no further collisions this did take me ages okay I was trying to do it as neatly as possible I made quite a lot of mistakes um, and this was my final neat version that I came up with it looks nothing like the mark scheme okay but I got there uh, and I can explain this way so that's the way I did it hopefully that helps